Uh, that's, and we'll get right into the message here this morning. So Ephesians chapter 6, uh, we're going to talk about parenting this morning, the right kind of parenting. If you want to write some stuff down, another thing, we don't have bulletins. Uh, we're not going to do bulletins for a while and maybe never, might do something else. I uh, don't have a PowerPoint. Uh, we did that on Wednesday night. We'll continue to do it on Wednesday night. Got a bunch of pictures to show, but uh, other things. So uh, a little bit different. Some of those things will come back along and along. Uh, you'll see some of that uh, come back, and then some of the different things will stay the same. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, familiar verses, especially if you're a parent. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Every mom and dad has got that verse memorized. I can tell you. Children, obey your parents. That's what the Lord said. All right? Then verse number 2. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers. And it's interesting that he doesn't say fathers and mothers. But he says fathers. Uh, Fathers are the leaders. It also applies to mothers, but it's more so to fathers. Provoke not your children to wrath. Do not bring your children up to become angry people. That's what it says. Uh, But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. All right, I got four thoughts for you this morning on parenting and important about parenting. And I hope if you want to write these down, it'll help you. Uh, many of you do not have children. Your children are grown and gone. Uh, and, uh, but uh, you may have grandkids. You might can pass this along. Uh, it's just uh, it's good information. And uh, you never know. Dana and I thought we weren't going to have any more kids either. But uh, uh, we did. So uh, there you go. Uh, that's the way God does it sometimes. All right, here we go. If you want to be the right kind of parent, you want to be the right kind of father, you want to be the right kind of mother, you must think correctly. You must think correctly. All right? You must think correctly. And you say, what in the world do you mean? Well, let me let me tell you what I mean. By giving you children, God has given to you one of the most important, exalted rewarding, challenging opportunities that you could ever have. He is calling you to help. Think about that. To help in growing a human being for Him. He has commissioned you to labor with Him in building a life through which He may be glorified and great good may be accomplished for other people. Did you get that? Now, if we left right now, that's all that needs to be said. But we're not, all right? Let me tell you something. We need to think correctly. Parenting is a privilege. And let me tell you this. You need to think this way. Your kids are a blessing to you. Your children are not a burden to you. And let me remind you this morning that your kids know how you look at them real quick. They know whether you look at them as a burden or as a blessing. Just by your actions and your words toward them and your thinking toward them. And so that's why I say you must think correctly. You should view your children as gifts from God. I've told my kids, I said, I'm so glad God gave you to me. And I'm thankful. Uh, for that, we must view our children as gifts from God. Uh, we must view them and have a high regard for them, that they're valuable, that they're precious. Let me tell you something. Jesus thought a whole bunch about kids. You remember the story that uh, some some mamas wanted to bring their kids to see Jesus, and the disciples uh, uh, said to Jesus, "Hey, uh, 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 I mean, said to the kids and to the mother, y'all get them uh, little, little snotty nosed kids away." You have to know the Greek in order to know that. But uh, 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 you have to read in the Greek. But get them snotty-nosed kids away uh, uh, from the Master. And Jesus said, Y'all hush. Bring them children unto me. They're important to me. 
And they're important, should be important to us. We should view our children as a stewardship from God. That God has given them again to us to raise for Him. And we're just managers for about 18 years. We're just managers. And then they're out on their own. But we view them as a stewardship. That we're working with God. We're in, we're in conjunction with God here to build this life through which He may be glorified and great good may be accomplished for this world. So we must think correctly. Secondly, we must treat them correctly. We must treat them correctly. If you want your children to listen to you, then you better listen to them. Uh, now, I know kids can, can uh, 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 boy, they can really be in your uh, face and they can be asking questions and all those kind of things. But let me tell you something, and, and you can look at some of their things and say, well, how, that's not important. But you better look at it as important because they think it's important. And that's important to them. And it should be important to you. We should treat them correctly. We should love them and accept them unconditionally before the Lord. And I'll tell you another way you need to treat your kids. Set some rules for them. You know why? A child who has no boundaries does not believe his mom and dad even loves him. Set some loving limitations. Uh, you have some rules. You, you, you have some uh, guidelines. Uh, that shows love. You know, we're, we're living in a world where there's a lot of angry kids. A lot of angry kids. You know why some of the anger has come into play? It is because they have been provoked by their fathers and even by their mothers to live an angry lifestyle. Children, uh, uh, provoke not your children to wrath because they have not treated them correctly. And they're pulled from stem and stern and yonder and here and, and all over. And boy, this is the thing that still irritates me to no end. Every now and then you'll hear somebody, uh, some parent call their kids stupid. Or you're a nothing. You're a nobody. Or you bother me. Or you're in my way. No wonder you're going to have an angry child. An angry child. Treat them correctly if you want to be the right kind of parent and you want your child to grow up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Number three, you must teach them correctly. So number one, you must think correctly. Number two, you must treat them correctly. Number three, you must treat, I mean, you must teach them correctly. And of course, as a Christian, we want to hand down our faith to our children. We want to hand down our faith. I want to bring them up, how? In the nurture and admonition of what? Of the Lord. Of the Lord. To bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I want, to, of course, to teach them correctly. One of the things that I want to teach my kid is this. To whom they are ultimately responsible to. To whom they are ultimately responsible to. And they are ultimately responsible for God. Now, when they're little and they're in my home, they're responsible to me. And they, they should obey their parents in the Lord for this is right. But one day they're not going to be under me and under my authority. They're going to be under the authority of someone else. But they're always under the authority of God. And they have to ultimately answer to Him. That's one of the things that must be taught our children. Uh, we, we, have to dis, we have to teach them to distinguish uh, between right and wrong. And then what's good and bad. Uh, uh, something may not be really right or wrong, but then is it good or is it bad? And we have to be able to, they have to be able to distinguish the difference between those two. Now there's a number of things that are just plain out right or wrong. But then there's some things that come up in our life, the Bible maybe not even speak explicitly on it. And then you have to ask the question, well, is it the best thing for you? Or is it going to ultimately hurt you and be bad for you? And so we have to, they have to learn that. They have to be taught that. They have to, uh, we have to teach them attentiveness and obedience and honor of parents. I'll tell you one, of, one thing you ought to teach your kids. 
is when somebody speaks to them, they speak back. Attentiveness. Uh, That's one thing you ought to teach your children. Uh, That is very important because it's disrespectful for somebody to speak to them and then they not speak back to them. Even if it's just a hello. And I know some kids are shy and this and that and the other, but, but kids need to learn attentiveness. Uh, 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 to others and, and, and to what they're doing, obedience. They need to uh, uh, honor of parents and, and again, responding properly to authority figures. We got a lot of problem in our world today uh, because parents didn't do their job properly and now people do not want to respond to other authority figures in their life. They, they, they hate the authority figures of their parents and they hate all authority figures. But they need to be taught to respond properly to authority figures. Uh, They need to be taught doctrine about being saved and and to know how to grow in the Lord. They need to be taught proper standards and rules. You know, our world today, uh, it's it's very opposite of the way God looks at things. You know, God looks at, at, God does not look at the outward appearance. Did you know that? Now, you know, your outward appearance is important. but, But God does not look at outward appearance. You know what God looks at? Your heart. Your heart. We got people who who think, you know, if you're beautiful, then you're all of a sudden a great person. Well, that's not the truth. God looks at your heart. You can be beautiful and be beautiful on the outside and absolutely ugly on the inside. Uh, A lot of people think, well, if you got brains, you know, if you're real smart, you're 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 a a, a great person. Well, that's not necessarily true because you can be smart and have a have a bad heart. Uh, 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 people think that, you know, you're strong and you're big and you're athletic and you're in great shape. And man, you, you know, you, you're, you're all right. And, and you're, a, you're a good person. No, not necessarily because you might have a bad heart. Or, or you're rich. You know, you've got uh, money and you've got things and you've got houses and cars and lands. And man, you must be a, a very good person. Well, not necessarily because it, it, it varies what's in your heart. And we must teach our children it matters what's in your heart, not what's on the outside. And it's not what you have and how pretty you are. Uh, we must teach them to be good stewards. Uh, you know, our children are going to grow up and they're going to make money. How are they going to treat their money? Are they going to waste it? Are they going to save it? Are they going to spend it properly? Are they going to be frivolous with their money? Are they going to have good credit or not good credit? Uh, uh, we need to teach them about their, their, their money. Uh, are they going to give to the Lord? Are they going to be faithful to the Lord? Because God honors that. Uh, their time, their talents, their abilities, whatever it may be. Uh, uh, they need to uh, uh, be good stewards of their time and their talents, their abilities, their treasure, their money. Uh, they, need to, they need to learn how to solve problems. Everybody's going to have conflict in this world. Everybody. I don't care who you are. Husbands and wives, uh, 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 children and parents, uh, 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 workers, neighbors, whatever it may be. How do you handle it? Well, the Bible tells us to be honest and to keep current and attack the problem and not the person and act and don't react. And that's a whole different message. We need to teach our kids to make decisions. Now, sometimes our kids are going to make decisions and you know what? They're going to fail. And you know there's nothing wrong with them failing. Did you know that? As long as it's not, you know life altering but sometimes let your kids fail uh, then they learn how uh, uh, to make, you know the, that was a bad decision so now I can make a better decision next time well we need to teach them to make good decisions we need to teach them to love and to serve others to have a servant's heart there you know most kids come in well all kids I guess come into this world you did too You did too. You came into this world and you wanted everybody to serve you. (laughs) Selfish. Every one of you. Selfish. The sad thing about it, when you get to be 20 years old and you're still that selfish, nobody likes you. Because you're supposed to be serving other people. Uh, we need to uh, teach our children to praise the Lord, no matter what's going on in their life, to praise the Lord. Because all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. We need to teach our children how to handle trials biblically. And again, these are all, these are all messages for another time. <laughs> I'm just giving you a rundown. 
And, and, if you, and if you're not getting them, it's on Facebook Live. And you can watch it later. Uh, 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 to handle trials biblically. To return good for evil. Uh, that forgiveness is a promise. And not a feeling. That love is giving and not getting. To be content. we got too many people that's discontent in our world today. That's why God put at the end of the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not covet. Because everybody looks at everybody else and says, Oh, I wish I could have that stuff. There were some people in New York City. I don't know if you saw it on the news. This was a few months ago. A, a girl in New York City had, had got a new pair of sneakers. And... Uh, they were a nice pair of sneakers. And uh, some other kids said, well, you know, she ought not to have those. And they went and took them from her. Beat her up in the process. Can you just imagine that? Let's say it. Be content. You know what? Be glad you got some kind of shoes on your feet. I, I do remember my grandmas and some of those. If you're my age and you had grandmas... They would talk to you about not having shoes. Now, most of us, you know, have got two, three, four, twenty, thirty pairs of shoes, forty. Well, be content. Make uh, we need to teach them to make disciples, to witness for the Lord, and then we need to teach them to be a good husband or a good wife, a good parent. You model. And teach them. Uh, and then they're going to have kids one day. Give you grandkids. So, we must think correctly, treat them correctly, teach them correctly. And then fourthly, you must keep your testimony. You must keep your testimony. In other words, you, now you're not perfect. But boy, you need to keep your testimony for the Lord. You know, something that you uh, build up and it takes you years to build it up, you can lose in just a few moments. So keep your testimony. Keep it intact. Model unconditional faithfulness to God. Continue to be faithful to God day in and day out. Model that before them. Let them see it. Keep your testimony. Keep it intact. And there's going to be times that you're going to be wrong. And you know what we do sometimes? Well, I was wrong, but I'm not going to apologize. Well, they're not going to appreciate that either. You need to admit when you're wrong. Admit when you're wrong. Model your proper role as husband, as wife, as father, as mother. And then God will get the glory from it all. I think we all want to be the right kind of parents. Especially, for, again, for those who still have kids at home. Well, are your goals God's goals? Are your goals for your personal life and for your children and for your wedded life and, and your work life and all those things, is, is, is your goals God's goals? God can do that in your life. We, uh, you say, well, I, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. Let me tell you something. You can change to be the kind of person God wants you to be. Amen. God can work that out in your life. I uh, was watching... Uh, Mike Huckabee uh, uh, last, uh, it was a couple weeks ago, and he had a man on there who uh, grew up and became a criminal. He said he, he took his first uh, drink of alcohol when he was 13 years old. And buddy, he said that's all it took because it was downhill after that for him. Ended up in prison. Ended up in prison. Got saved. And he didn't get no jailhouse religion like some of them do. He truly got saved. Uh, and now he's got a ministry. And he, he got involved in anything and everything you can imagine, he said. Uh, but in, uh, now he's got a ministry uh, to reach uh, felons. And it's called 
Forgiven felons is what it's called. That's his ministry. He said, I'll always be a felon. I can't get away from that. But I don't want to be known. And God told him, he said, you don't need to be known by just being a felon. You need to be known as being a forgiven felon. And let me tell you something. God can change anybody. He can change any heart, any soul. And He can change us to be the right kind of parents that we need to be. And you uh, young folks who uh, are going to have kids one day, I hope some of these things will, that you'll remember, even, even what you heard today on Father's Day 2020, will be a blessing and a help to you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed.